Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to the final segment of uh, Finding Me in the ITV Networks and today of course I have with me is Mohammed Desai. Before we went on the break we were speaking about the, the importance of activism and of maintaining the pressure and uh, to raise awareness and of course to push the South African government into taking an official standpoint on BDS. Although ANC as a political movement has taken uh, adopted an official policy, it has not translated into state policy as yet. And Mohammed, I spoke to Bangani Masoko from the International Desk at Kosata House and he said to me that certainly it's just a matter of time before South Africa makes it official state policy that South Africa is going to boycott Israel but he says that that the, the gap between where we are now and that point will demand much more activism and of course to get to more activism you need to go out you need to to, to make create more awareness uh, you need to give more information etc and things like that isn't it the activism is needed in order for government to move. No yes. government just acts because it has morals or it has ethics. It's or civil society. Like that. That, Precisely. Yes. Civil society needs to apply the necessary pressure and to send a very clear message to government that, that its constituency yeah. wants this program or that program, whether it's HIV mm -hmm. treatment or whether it's a boycott mm -hmm. against uh, Israel. Yes. And BDS South Africa, this is what we are trying to achieve. We're trying to build up the necessary ground for such action uh, to be uh, taken by and, the And I think we have government. to take all of that into context of what individuals, especially, I mean, if you look at the amount of non-Muslims, and let's just look at the Rachel Corey who gave her life in front of the bulldozers, that's a starting point for young South African Muslims to say that, look, here is a young woman who went out and gave her life. But more than that, if you look at recently Stephen Hawking, the physicist who withdrew from the conference in Israel, and then we look at the Teachers Union of Ireland, who became the first lecturers association in Europe to call for an academic boycott of Israel. So like that, there are a lot of people, the dock workers, the you know, labor workers, etc., who are contributing towards this. But I find that there is a hypocrisy inside of the Muslim community. Last year, when we campaigned for Carsten State, who had not yet agreed to stop supplying Israel, uh, we received a lot of uh, mail and letters from people who said that it's in our business and in our business interest, and we've already bought. The dates or whatever and we have to carry studying and these are Muslim business people not prepared to sacrifice and then we find a similar problem in terms of what has happened now at Wits where you have a so-called principal or is he's the principal at uh, Wits, uh, Adam Habib uh, not that we're saying that this is a Muslim issue but that if somebody who, who claims to be a principled individual who as we both agreed has written articles on civil protests the right of civil society organization the right of civil society movements the right to demonstrate is now actually going everything against what he's writing and then he's actually brought charges also against these students adverts I mean this raises tremendous issues and and perhaps you can just enlighten the audience more about this yes I mean uh, let's look at the issue of Fitz University here we have a vice chancellor designate Adam uh, professor Adam Habib who claims to support the Palestinian struggle who claims to support civil society and civil society protests yet his own students at Fitz University protested against an Israeli concert, an Israeli embassy funded concert yes. taking place uh, at, uh, at Wits University and subsequently... Which went against the, the SRC uh, boycott of uh, any Israeli uh, basic cultural activities on campus, isn't yes, it? Yes, the students weren't just wild hooligans mm. or just wanting to vent anger. They had adopted a certain position a year ago. Mm a year ago in support of the boycott of Israel. They were protesting this Israeli embassy uh, event. They actually got the event to be cancelled. But subsequently, what does Professor Adam Habib and the rest of the Wits University management do? They bring charges against the students. They bring ridiculous charges, um, charges for having singing, chanting and stomping your feet. This is the kind of charges that are being brought so anybody who's going to Israel in the future, you're, you're going to be charged. <laughs> this could have major ramifications yes, for course. student protests. Freedom of speech. But also yes. it's an indication of how certain people get co-opted in systems. Mm. And so you have somebody that speaks left, yes. that, that speaks in support of certain and issues. And writes academic articles claiming academic integrity and then the action is different. Absolutely. And now he gets into a position and he, uh, and, and he, he should be at the forefront of defending the students mm. and in fact on insisting that no Israeli embassy or Israeli associated event takes place 
at Wits University. Uh, Zwilin Zima Vavi, the General Secretary of Kosatu, was addressing students at a rally yesterday, and this was his position, that why are we, why are we allowing Israeli events in the first place mm. to take place on our campuses? These sort of events bring the very university into disrepute. Yes. Uh, Muslim businesses that may uh, claim to support Palestine on the one hand and then stock certain products that are coming in from Israel such as Soda Stream or Hava Cosmetics uh, this goes in the, this brings the actual business into it does, disrepute yes. and it's not those that that protest against these businesses or those that protest against these universities that are the troublemakers. Mm. The troublemakers are the businesses themselves who bring in the Israeli products. And who maintain the, the, the oil machines of the Zionists. Certainly, yes. certainly. And it's these students and it's these activists on the ground that are actually acting in the best interest of all of us. Okay, so as a parting thought, what would you like to leave the audience and what would you like to say about BDS? And what is your official website? And you know, if there's anybody who would like to contact you also, if you can give a telephone number, that will be fine. The boycott, divestment and sanctions can campaign Croatia and to, um, and to viewers out there is really a practical campaign in which ordinary South Africans can participate And it's in. non-violent. It's a non-violent yeah. uh, action that all of us can be part of. Yeah. It's a movement that is growing by the day. More and more uh, cities and countries are participating or people from these countries are participating. I really urge viewers um, to, to visit our website, to call into our offices which are based in Johannesburg, to get more information, to empower yourself and to be part of one of the largest international movements of our time. And we would also like to encourage all our viewers to make some contribution to the BDS campaign. Well, that's my encouragement and my view, so I speak independently. And with that, I would like to just make a final comment and to say that with so many non-Muslims making a conscious effort and sacrificing themselves to support BDS, I actually feel ashamed of the regimes that control the Muslim majority lands. These regimes are in bed with the oppressors and actively maintain the status quo in Palestine in order to safeguard their own in illegitimate authority. The regimes in Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Bahrain, Qatar, UAE and Kuwait are an embarrassment to the Muslim conscious and a consciousness. And as a Sunni Muslim, I additionally want to say that I'm extremely offended at the actions of these regimes which represent, supposedly represent Sunni Muslims, but have spectacularly failed the Muslims and the Muslim struggle. As Martin Luther King said, an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. These Sunni regimes don't give a damn about humanity. They are only focused on the preservation of their own illegitimate statuses. And as South African Muslims, we should also start asking these questions. And so I'd like to leave you again with these final words, again from Martin Luther King, who said, History will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. And with that, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you for being here with me. And to you, the viewers, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.